Hello, I am Recky, and welcome back for another uh, military reactions with your buddy Recky. We're going to check out a completely new channel today, and that is Only Planes is the channel name. And you find the link for the video we're going to watch, and of course, for the channel located right down there in the description. Go there and give them the support that they so much deserve. The video we're going to watch is called The Most Chilling Plane of World War World War II. And I guess it's talking about P-61 Black Widow. But the P-61 is fairly unknown to me. The P-51, um, the Mustang, I think it is. Isn't that what they call the tank buster as well? But the P-61, that is completely new to me. And uh, I love learning new things. That's one thing for sure. If you do enjoy this, don't forget to smack the like. And of course, hit that subscribe. That's something I would greatly, greatly appreciate. We say thank you so much to everyone who supports me on Patreon. And of course, on channel membership. Thank you. Thank you. A big shout out to the Supreme Tier Donators over by Patreon. And of course, on channel membership. Thank you. Personal shout outs goes to the ultimate supporters Deja, Walt, Dwayne, Dana, Troy, Robert, Matt, Barbara, and Kathy. And uh, a big thank you to um, uh, I think it was Robert for actually sending me this. Robert Griffin, thank you so much for sending me this suggestion. I am already super hyped. And that's it. No more recce talk. And uh, now it's plane talk. Do it. Let's do this. P-51 is the Mustang. This is P-61. Piloting a P-61 Black Widow was both an electrifying and daunting mission. As the first American aircraft built specifically for night fighting, its futuristic design and cutting-edge technology wow. seemed light years ahead. Unlike the conventional single-engine fighters, this beauty show... Um, did he say it was built for night fighting? Built specifically for night fighting. Its futuristic design and cutting edge technology seemed light years ahead. Unlike the conventional single engine fighters, this beauty showcased raw power and ingenuity with her sleek twin boom design and central fuselage pod. Yet, the thought of dogfighting as an interceptor in the night sky's darkness was enough to chill any pilot to the bone. Clocking in at over 350 miles per hour, the Black Widow could tear through the night sky. But it, it, I don't get a feeling that this should, is supposed to be a dogfighting airplane. Single engine seems to be a better go. But then again, I'm not an aviator specialist, so I can just shut up and watch the video. Cool. Powered by her twin Pratt and Whitney R2810 double wasp engines, each unleashing 2,000 horsepower. Shit. This was a technical marvel never before seen in World War II combat aviation. Armed to the teeth, she boasted four 20mm Hispano M2 cannons and 4.50 caliber machine guns in a dorsal turret, making her a flying fortress. Nice. If that wasn't enough, the top secret SCR 720 microwave radar tucked under her nose made her a predator in the darkness. Every curve and detail of the P-61 Black Widow screamed defiance. Her black painted form vanished into the night, visible only to those unfortunate enough to fall into her radar's grasp. New pilots felt a cold shiver down their spines at the thought of braving the perilous night skies over Europe and the Pacific. But once they took the controls, it became clear. With her advanced radar technology and pitch black paint job, the Black Widow reigned supreme. She quickly earned her reputation as one of the safest planes to fly and one of the most lethal foes in night combat. Even being able to shoot down enemy planes without wow. ever making visual contact. Early British night fighters fending off German raids were clumsy adaptations of day fighters, lacking the gear for effective nocturnal combat. Watching from across the pond, the US Army Air Forces realized the critical need for efficient nighttime fighters. They demanded a dedicated night fighter with advanced radar and superior performance to That's kind of cool. Wow. It's if this is the first time you hear about this uh airplane, let me know in the comment section. Let me know if you learned something today. Intercept and destroy enemy bombers in the darkness. 
At the time, the Northrop Aircraft Corporation was a relatively unknown player in aviation, having only been active since 1939 as a subcontractor. Despite their limited experience, they seized the opportunity as larger firms like Lockheed, Grumman, and Douglas were swamped with commitments. Northrop won the contract to create an aircraft from scratch tailored for night fighting. The request called for a high ceiling to intercept enemy planes at high speeds, extended loiter time to patrol a defended zone undetected, and enough firepower to down heavy bombers. The fighter also needed to incorporate the latest radar technology, the Airborne Intercept. In November 1940, the P-61 Black Widow project began. The design was sleek and sinister. It was a massive machine for a fighter at 50 feet long with a 66 foot. They are still calling, calling this a fighter and uh, it's not a long range bomber and it's, it's a fighter, which is kind of strange because it's so big. But then again, I'm not an aviator specialist. So yeah. Wingspan. The P-61 featured a twin boom design and a crew of three, a pilot, a gunner, and a new addition, a radar operator. This radar engineer would control the compact airborne intercept, eliminating the need for ground-based radar guidance. The Black Widow's sleek form, bristling with weapons, prowled the night skies. It was a magnificent aircraft, ready to strike before its enemies even knew they were targeted. Northrop's daring innovation paid off, creating the world's first dedicated night fighter. The SCR-720 radar system used by the P-61 Black Widow was a crucial component of its night fighting capabilities. Developed by the MIT Radiation Laboratory and the U.S. Army Signal Corps, this radar system played a pivotal role in detecting and tracking enemy aircraft under the cover of darkness. The SCR-720 radar was a significant advancement over its predecessors, featuring a shorter wavelength that greatly improved accuracy and reduced ground echo interference. This radar had a detection range of approximately 5 to 10 miles, depending on conditions. It operated by sweeping the sky with a precision beam using a 30-inch rotating scanner receiver dish housed oh, in the aircraft's nose under... Believe it or not, when it comes to radar they were booming it in the 40s that's how it all started the 40s the second world war was definitely one of those wars that changed so much when it comes to both aviation and just modern warfare under a protective fiberglass bubble the radar weighed over 400 pounds and included advanced features such as identification friend or foe capabilities what? which helped distinguish between allied and enemy aircraft one of the critical technical advancements of the SCR-720 was its helical scan antenna system, which allowed the radar to maintain a narrow focused beam while scanning the sky. This system solved the problem of efficiently directing microwave energy from the magnetron to the antenna. The helical scan system proved effective in providing the necessary precision for nighttime interception missions. Additionally, the radar operator seated behind the pilot and gunner played an essential role in guiding the P-61 towards its targets. The operator would use the radar to track enemy aircraft and direct the pilot for interception. Once the P-61 was within visual range, the pilot could engage the enemy using the aircraft's formidable armament of 420mm Hispano M2 cannons and 4.50 caliber machine guns. The development and implementation of the SCR-720 radar were part of a broader effort to improve airborne radar systems during the war. The collaboration between U.S. and British scientists, particularly in the development of the cavity magnetron, was a significant milestone that enabled the creation of more compact and powerful radar systems like the S- And again, great nations come together. CR-720. Wow. This technology was vital for the success of night fighters like the P-61 Black Widow, paving the way for night fighters to claim the darkened skies over Europe. Powered by two Pratt and Whitney R2800 double wasp radial engines, each churning out 2,000 horsepower, the P-61 could hit speeds up to 366 miles per hour, a remarkable feat for such a large aircraft. 
Its tricycle landing gear, retractable flaps, and 646-gallon internal fuel capacity supported its hefty fighting weight of over 29,000 pounds. Yeah. A stealthy innovation was its glossy black paint. The decision to paint the P-61 Black Widow in an all-black paint scheme was driven by the need for effective night camouflage. So I would say it don't During say World it. War II, researchers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology conducted tests to determine the best paint scheme for night fighters. This decision was based on extensive testing, which included flying aircraft into searchlights to observe which colors were least visible. They discovered that a glossy black finish provided the optimal camouflage, reflecting searchlight beams away from the aircraft and making it nearly invisible against the night sky. The glossy black paint outperformed other tested schemes such as matte black and olive drab with matte black undersides, leading to its adoption for most production P61S. Oh. This black paint did not require any special technology for its application, but it had to be durable and maintain its gloss in various operational conditions. The main objective was to enhance the aircraft's ability to evade detection by both enemy ground observers and other aircraft during night missions. And I think this was maybe one of the first planes that actually had the joint thingy back there. I mean, this is the first time I'm hearing about P-61, and I'm telling you, I had no clue. I'm super happy uh, that I ma managed to discover a new fighter yet. So cool. The effect of this paint scheme was significant in operational performance. The P-61's black finish made it an elusive target during night operations, complementing its advanced radar system and powerful armament. The combination of the SCR-720 radar and the black paint allowed the P-61 to approach and engage enemy aircraft with a higher degree of stealth, increasing its effectiveness as a night fighter. Beginning with the P-61B model, night fighters were equipped with specialized night vision binoculars that dramatically improved the pilot's accuracy in nocturnal combat. These 5.8 magnification optical devices, coupled with an advanced gun sight, provided Black Widow operators with an unparalleled advantage in night fighting, increasing targeting precision by a factor of four. Shit. The binoculars were ingeniously mounted on a track system that allowed them to traverse the aircraft's windows, providing a wide field of view. Oh, so they can actually move the NV like this? This carriage was further enhanced wow. by a gimbal mount, which compensated for aircraft vibrations and turbulence, ensuring a stable image even in rough conditions. With practice, pilots could effectively operate the P-61 while looking through these binoculars, enabling them to detect enemy aircraft in near total darkness. The P-61 Black Widow made a dramatic public debut in January 1944, with a nighttime flyover of the Los Angeles Coliseum, packed with 75,000 attendees for an Army-Navy show. The crowd couldn't see the plane. They could only hear its engines roaring overhead, a haunting introduction to America's new night fighter. <laughs> the 422nd Night Fighter Squadron was the first to fly the Black Widow in Europe. That's got to be the best result you can get. We're going to put on a show of our new uh, our airplane. All right, so here it comes. Or is it? Mission complete. On May 23, 1944, almost a month later, the 425th Squadron received their P-61S. Unfortunately, oh. both squadrons got their aircraft too late to join the D-Day invasion on June 6. The Black Widow's first real mission was to hunt down the dreaded German V-1 buzz bomb. In the Mediterranean, the 414th Squadron received their P-61S in December. They teamed up with the 422nd Squadron during the Battle of the Bulge, the infamous last significant German offensive oh. on the Western Front. During this brutal campaign, the P-61's limitations became apparent. Lieutenant Van Nyswender, piloting his Daisy May Black Widow, encountered a twin-engined Messerschmitt 410. The chase took them skimming over the treetops. Despite pushing the Black Widow to full throttle, the Mi-410 pulled away at 400 miles per hour, leaving the P-61 trailing and highlighting its sluggish speed compared to the newer German fighters. By the end of 1944, the 422nd and 425th squadrons faced critical shortages of spare parts. 
As a smaller company, Northrop struggled to keep up with the demand and the supply issues persisted. The squadrons had to make do with whatever equipment they had. Ultimately, most operational P-61S were sent to the Pacific, where they continued to serve in the relentless push against Japanese forces. Despite its shortcomings, the Black Widow remained a symbol of innovation and determination, embodying the relentless spirit of the Allied forces. And it's a, such a token of how far they had to go uh, back in the 40s just to get that niche, just to get that edge. They had to travel like decades in front of everyone else to actually become a top-notch plane. The war forced every country and every nation to become more innovative than ever. After securing Guadalcanal in late 1942, the American stronghold desperately needed protection from Japanese nighttime raids. The Black Widows weren't ready, so the Americans temporarily adapted the B-25, P-40, P-38, and P-70 as night fighters. Finally, in May 1944, the Black Widows were combat ready. The 6th Night Fighter Squadron was the first to receive them, followed by the 418th and 419th Squadrons. On July 1, 1944, the 421st Squadron was activated, operating from Nadzab, New Guinea and Wake Island bases. Operating the P-61 Black Widow demanded exceptional preparation, setting it apart from most contemporary aircraft. Pilots underwent rigorous pre-flight routines to enhance their night vision. The primary methods included wearing red-tinted goggles for several hours before takeoff or secluding themselves in a pitch-dark room for about 30 minutes prior to a mission. That makes sense. These techniques effectively conditioned their eyes for nocturnal operations. A less common approach involved keeping one eye closed and the other open for an extended period before flight. However, this method was generally avoided as the P-61 manual warned it could induce, quote, disturbing sensations. On one of their first missions, Flight Lieutenant Owen Wolf and Radio Officer Lieutenant Byron Allen of the 421st received orders to intercept an enemy bomber near Owe Island. Despite bad weather hampering their radar, Wolf managed to catch up with a Japanese twin-engine bomber. The Black Widow's nose guns and cannons lit up the night, sending the bomber down in flames into the ocean. The 418th Squadron, based at Moratai Halmaharas, Netherlands East Indies, operated the top-scoring Black Widow. Despite this, they conducted only 18 successful attacks, their most notable mission destroying three Kawasaki Kai-61S in a single night. The P-61's role was limited during the last six months of World War II, as the Axis powers were too weakened to mount significant aerial resistance. In more than one report, Black Widow crews claimed to have been able to take out enemy aircraft in utter darkness without ever seeing their target due to weather conditions until it was already falling from the sky. Captain Lee Kendall's Lady in the Dark P-61 is renowned as the most iconic Black Widow fighter in history. This aircraft, oh, wow. extensively photographed in the Pacific Theater, is believed to have achieved the final two aerial victories of World War II. The first occurred on the war's last night, and the second came nearly a day after hostilities had officially ceased. In both instances, Captain Kendall downed Japanese Imperial Army planes on kamikaze missions, forcing them to crash through relentless pursuit rather than direct hits. Arriving late in the war, the P-61 Black Widow's impact was limited. Although it proved useful against the Japanese Air Force, it was already considered outdated in Europe. Northrop engineers extensively tried improving the P-61, including redesigning the airborne intercept radar, enhancing the remote-controlled turret and adding turbochargers. Despite these upgrades, the aircraft still lagged in speed. In Europe, the more advanced British Mosquito M K-17 gradually replaced the Black Widow, relegating it to secondary roles such as reserve and training. Nonetheless, the P-61 saw action in every theater of World War II, claiming a total of 127 enemy warplanes and 18 German V-1 buzz bombs. Post-war, the Black Widow contributed significantly to a joint study by the Army Air Force 
Navy Weather Bureau and National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, which later became NASA. Oh. A key initiative, Operation Thunderstorm, aimed to study thunderstorms to enhance the safety of military and civilian aircraft. The insights gained from this project laid the groundwork for the modern understanding of thunderstorms and related weather phenomena. Though these post-war roles briefly extended the P-61 service life, it was officially retired in 1954. Despite its late arrival and limited wartime impact, the P-61 Black Widow remains a symbol of innovation and resilience, firmly embedded in the legacy of military aviation history. Wow, such a great video. First of all, I'm going to say uh, uh, that was an uh, amazing narrative. And I am definitely going back to Only Planes. That's the channel name. Uh, of course, I already hit subscribe and like the video. And if you want to check it out by yourself, uh, you find the link for the channel and for the video we just watched located right down there in the description. So go there and give them the support that they so much deserve. I like, again, I'm going to go back to the force of being innovative in the midst of war because other nations, the bad guys, was doing exactly the same. So there was a race. Unfortunately, um, the P-61 um, lacked in speed. Other than that, it was just a per perfect airplane then they didn't throw it away they actually used this uh to learn more about thunderstorms how it affects av aviation i had no clue and i am giggling here because i just learned a bunch about the p61 thanks to only planes so if you did learn something today with this video with me let me know in the comment section i would love to hear it and if you did enjoy Hit that like, and of course, that subscribe. Until next time, I'm Ricky. You stay safe.